There's a lot of people, again, on the internet having, you know, a certain amount of fun with them, albeit in rather dark circumstances. But I think there are basic things like, you know, if you're if you're assigned to protect the president, shouldn't you be at least as tall as the president if you're going to shove your body in front of him? Shouldn't you be able to cover his torso and head? Don't you just want, like, very strong, uh, uh, beefy guys to do this? Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. So they'll be checking out a video titled It Just Sickens Me. Douglas Murray Slams Secret Service. Wow. I believe this is going to be another interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. Joining me now is author of international bestsellers, including The Strange Death of Europe, The Madness of Crowds, and his latest book, The War on the West, Douglas Murray. Douglas, thank you so much for joining us as always. Now, you wrote that the attack on Donald Trump is reminiscent of the shootings of Ronald Reagan and Teddy Roosevelt. What did you take away from what occurred in Pennsylvania at the weekend? Well, like most people, uh, I watched with horror uh, in real time as it was happening. And uh, it was reminded again, as all of us have been, of that terrible way in which history can turn on a few millimetres, uh, as in this case, as in uh, attempts to assassinate previous presidents of the United States. Uh, I still think that in some ways, because everyone's moving on to the political significance of this, there still isn't quite enough of a registering of how close America came to a situation that is almost unthinkable. Um, had the assassin's bullet been very slightly to the one side, uh, not only would we have had an assassination of a former president and a running uh, um, candidate on live television, uh, but the Republican Party, the Democrats, America as a whole, and therefore the world, could easily have fallen into an absolute pit of recrimination, retribution, and much more. Uh, you know, history really does turn on such moments. And, um, you know, thank goodness on this occasion, things are going in a better direction than they might have done. Yeah, he certainly was extremely, extremely lucky. Now, Douglas, let's talk about the catastrophic failures of the Secret Service that led to Trump being shot. It's now been revealed the agency knew of the threat one hour before the rally, yet still allowed Trump to take the stage. Here's more. And according to Senator John Barrasso, just spoke to him as soon as he hung up on this briefing. He said that apparently the Secret Service had identified as a character of suspicion this man, this shooter, because they saw a rangefinder on him as well as a backpack. And this all happened more than an hour before the shooting actually occurred. So they saw the guy and they identified this guy as suspicious. Now, more details coming from a source familiar here who was also in the meeting, tells me that about 10 minutes before former President Trump went on to the stage, they had gone from looking at this guy as suspicious to now looking at him as a threat. Douglas, how bad is this? The Secret Service knew there was a threat, yet Trump was still allowed to go on stage. Oh, I think there are huge questions to answer, and the Secret Service um, and its leadership has to answer them. I mean, you know, everything like this will be analysed probably for years to come, you know, who knew what, when, and so on. And almost immediately, you know, you get feverish conspiracy theories from all sides about it. And those have to be uh, dampened down by being answered. Um, you know, I think people should, should know what exactly went wrong here, how it went so wrong. I mean, it's easy to be, you know, literally an armchair pundit on this occasion, opining on what they should have done better. And it's always very easy in hindsight. However, obviously, this is a catastrophic failure by the Secret Service. Uh, this gunman, as, as the days have gone on, it's become clearer and clearer that he uh, was spotted by members of the crowd. Uh, now we know that he was that the the Secret Service were made aware that he was a threat. Now we know that the policeman got onto the roof, and and saw him and was pointed down by the gunman. Now we know that the head of the Secret Service, the director of the Secret Service, says that one reason why snipers uh, weren't put on that roof was because it was a slopey roof, and therefore presented a health danger, which is. Uh, bewildering uh, uh, to many of us. I'm sure she has a good explanation for why it would have been so dangerous to have had another sniper on another slopey roof and that that's more important to protect the health and safety than uh, the possibility of 
having a former president's head blown off on live television. I'm sure she'll answer that, but so so far she's done rather badly in that regard. You know, the Secret Service needs to have the trust not just of the people it protects, but of the American people. And uh, it's going to have to do an awful lot in the days and weeks ahead to regain that trust. You're spot on. You're referring there to the head of the Secret Service, Kimberly Cheadle. She's actually Dr. Jill Biden's top pick for the role, so uh, say no more. Uh, she's mm. really gaslighting America over what happened. As you said yesterday, she was blaming a sloped roof for the oversight, and now she's got another excuse. Here it is. Was every element, every part of his, from the intelligence to the counter-assault team, to the detail agents, the shift agents, I mean every element top to bottom of the advance in the operation was every element increased after you learned of this credible threat. What we increased was what we felt was appropriate for the former president and for that particular event on that day. We have been increasing the assets and the resources and the staffing that we have been providing to the former president uh, since he was a presidential candidate and then the presumptive nominee. That's what I can tell you. That sounds like a no. Douglas, how does this woman still have a job? You know, people like her are an absolute liability because um, when when the public see, you know, DEI hires, I mean, first of all, some people do get into uh, jobs because they're simply competent. That still does happen, men and women and all sorts of others. But when people see DEI hires, you know, there's a sort of feeling like, well, you know, OK, Jill Biden uh, uh, might be able to put forward a favoured candidate, by the way, I don't particularly think she should, for a, a school district, I don't know, discussion of LGBTQ, whatever stupid, relatively unimportant thing you can think of in the, in the woke mind virus. But there are some things that DEI really shouldn't uh, interfere in. And one of them, I would have thought, is the operation of the Secret Service. Uh, one of them is anything that absolutely pertains immediately to life and death matters. You know, you just want the best. I feel sorry for some of the female agents uh, who've been, uh, who were captured on uh, a video last Saturday, because a lot of people, again, on the internet are having, you know, a certain amount of fun with them, albeit in rather dark circumstances. But I think there are basic things like, you know, if you're if you're assigned to protect the president, shouldn't you be at least as tall as the president if you're going to shove your body in front of him? Shouldn't you be able to cover his torso and head? Don't you just want like very strong, uh, uh, beefy guys to do this? Is diversity very important in such a situation? I would say absolutely not. It's no more important to have diversity in the Secret Service than it is to have it in the NBA. Um, we recognize that we don't need diversity in the NBA. Uh, we don't need diversity and all of these sorts of DI hire nonsense that the head of the Secret Service is demonstrating and talking to. We don't need that in life and death matters around which the fates of whole nations rotate. We just need the best, whoever they are. And uh, I wish that America got off this uh, particular bandwagon and got off it fast. Mm -hmm. It's uh, too dangerous for that. It's too late in the day. You know, there's, it's, it's just too late to be playing that horrible, stupid game. Yeah, it is. Well, it is way too late. Absolutely. And I noticed that Kimberly Cheadle has been issued with a subpoena to appear, to appear before uh, the oversight committee. So perhaps we might finally get some answers. But look, just on the diversity picks of the Secret Service, uh, there was an ad that it put out actually bragging about its diversity picks. Have a look. They're aiming to have 30% women recruits by 2030. I'm very conscious uh, as, uh, as I sit in this chair now of making sure that we need to uh, attract diverse candidates and ensure that we are developing and giving opportunities to everybody in our workforce, um, and particularly women. Douglas, I know you mentioned, you know, you feel sorry for, for some of the agents. Uh, one of them fumbled around trying to find her holster. She also ducked behind Donald Trump. Another was too preoccupied with her sunglasses on the day. I mean, it was absolutely shambolic. They were running around like headless chooks. But you're right. Donald Trump is six foot three, 239 pounds. I mean, what role did the diversity policy play in the weekend's incident? You know, the... the the whole diversity thing, I just, as I say, I hope we all get through this fast. 
because there are there are some fields in which you can argue that diversity matters things about ideas for instance it's wise to have a wide diversity of ideas pick among them and work out what's true and then act on it fine absolutely does it apply everywhere no why does why does she want 30% women why i is it if there's something magically brilliant or better that women can bring, then work out what it is and work out who can bring it. But uh, uh, that isn't what she's doing. That isn't what these DEI dolts are doing. They are playing this infantile game, which works possibly in small sectors of very precise learning. It does not work across the whole world or across the whole of government or across the whole of the United States. Clearly not. You don't need 30% women. You just need 100% the best. That's all. And if that means that in some jobs it's mainly men, that's fine. And if in others it's mainly women, that's fine. Just the best. Nothing else. And it just sickens me to see these things. The, 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 the smugness, the, the, the stupid lack of questioning of the premises of this. What does it matter what the DEI quota is if you almost had a former president assassinated on live television in front of millions? And, you know, as I say, it, it's just deeply shocking to me and uh, uh, th th that in such an important field this should be going on. People like me have been pointing this out for years. I always used to say, you know, there'll be a time when the bridges start falling down and they'll realize you just have to get experts. But it's always worse even than I predict. It was not the bridges that almost fell down on Saturday night, but a former president running for the presidency. That would have been catastrophic for America. And as I say, anyone who played these stupid infantile games on these matters of life and death, and not just the matters of life and death of one man, but of the Republic, really should be nowhere near power. They should be as far away and as unemployed as it's possible for anyone to be. They're a danger. Wow, what an interesting video. Just by the title, it sickens me, Douglas Murray slams the Secret Service DI quota. Secret Service must answer to the failure regarding Trump assassination. And God knows if the bullet uh, eats some vital part. We thank God that the bullet only eats just uh, some part of the year not directly to the head, that would have been uh, a serious problem. And just by what Douglas have said, Secret Service must answer to the failures. You saying uh, you suspected something like this is going to happen and you didn't try to stop Trump from coming uh, on stage, I feel that is, that is, totally, that is totally wrong. Because if you have any evidence that something like this is going to happen, even any idea, you should try to, uh, you know, work out to make sure you eliminate any threat of this kind and in order to prevent Trump from being harmed. And they, they, they never did that. As a result of that, that was what led to the uh, nearly assassination, which is what Douglas is saying in this video that if you are going to be employed to guard someone, at least you should be uh, the same height with the person or you should be taller than the person. Because I believe we all are capable. Men are capable, women are capable, but there are certain jobs, there are certain rules that are suited for some category of people that they can perform very well in those jobs. It's not about, you know, secret service protecting someone. It's not about having the best idea or having the best idea to contribute. It's about being fit enough to protect the person you opt to protect. And that's what Douglas is saying in this video that the, uh, that that she even came up with an idea that uh, they are going to employ 30% uh, female. And I feel that is totally uh, absurd. It shouldn't be about the percentage of uh, female or the percentage of male that is going to be employed in the secret service. I believe the right people that have the right skill should be employed. 
employment shouldn't be based on uh, on gender shouldn't be based on you know trying to bridge our uh, equality between men and women this is what have to do with a matter of life and death so if you are employing people to this field you have to make sure you employ the right people in order to not cause harm to the person you are trying to protect because if you are trough that donor trough that it is very tall you have someone that is uh, a, a dwarf or someone that is very short to protect him we believe that that is pure stupidity so i believe when you are trying to protect someone you are trying to shield the person from any harm at least you should be in the same height with the with the person or you should be taller than the person this is the point i believe douglas is trying to uh uh, uh portray in this video so i strongly believe if you want to employ people into uh the secret service it shouldn't be about about uh gender it shouldn't be employing more men or employing more women if the women are more qualified for the job they have the skill that is required and all that then they should be employed the same thing applies if men are more qualified for the job they should be applied so you coming up with an ideology that you employ 30 percent of female or employ 50 percent of male i feel that is not the right thing to do the right people who have the right skill who are qualified for the job should be given the opportunity to do the job because at the end of the day all we just want is a well done job and that is what douglas is trying to express in this video wow wow i've really learned a lot just listening to douglas so i'll also like to hear your comments regarding the point and the facts that douglas have stated in this video don't forget click on the subscribe button click on the like button do have a nice day Thank you.